word it says and without him was not anything made that was made that means outside of the word nothing can be made not a life not a destiny without him was not anything made that was made hallelujah so would discuss a few things along the team tonight and i'm praying that god will open our hearts and grant us understanding in jesus name let's begin our discussion from the book of ephesians 1 and verse 3 i'll read two scriptures and then we'll trust to be transformed by that which the lord will reveal to us ephesians 1 and verse 3 Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, take note, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he's bringing a very profound information to guide their understanding. He's saying that our father the father of our lord jesus christ had blessed us he's speaking to believers blessed us with every spiritual blessing he's saying this is the heritage of every believer that this spiritual blessing is the heritage of every believer and it is routed through the office of the christ are we together so he's given a very profound information that a lot depends the, your excelling in life depends on this kind of orientation that every spiritual blessing has been given to the believer in Christ. Scripture number 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. If we're together, please say amen. amen. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Paul began to talk on sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, but then he makes a very profound statement in verse 9 here's what he says and god is able to make all grace say all grace. all grace he's talking about all the dimensions of grace immediately you can see from this scripture that grace is multifaceted multi-dimensional so he says god it is within his ability to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work he says all grace produces all sufficiency all grace god is able you know what it means to be sufficient to be sufficient means to be capable lacking nothing always rising to the occasion that god is able to make all grace abound towards you the believer so that you having all sufficiency that you will abound in every good work if that is you shout a loud amen, amen. so i wrote down here and i want to use this as a foundation that the believer's experience please look up the believer's experience as designed by god was supposed to be your faith adventure is supposed to culminate to a life of excellence and glory now you have to find a way of accepting this as a reality that every believer in christ regardless your background regardless what it had been before your encounter with christ that once you are in christ and you have encountered the lord jesus christ you have a heritage and a destiny of excellence and glory you believe that say amen now it matters that your life reveals the excellency and the glory of god there are many scriptures in the bible that reveals and attest to the fact that the believers rising brings glory to god are we together in matthew chapter 5 jesus was teaching what we call the beatitudes and verse 13 he begins by saying ye are the salt of the earth he says now if the salt has lost its saltiness wherewith shall it be salted that it is good for nothing except to be trampled other foot by men 
of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Then he says, neither, that means it's an anomaly, it shouldn't happen. Neither should do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lamp stand and it gives light to everyone there. Are we together? Verse 16 now says, let your light, the word let means permit, let your light so shine, not just before spirits, not just before angels, before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So there is a mandate upon every believer that in when the glory and the excellency of the kingdom is revealed in and through your life, Jesus is glorified. In John 15 and verse 8, the Bible says, John 15 and verse 8, it says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. When you go to verse 16 of the same chapter, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Are we together? Are we still together? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he says we are his workmanship. His workmanship. The tools that an artist uses to display his creativity. We are his workmanship, he says. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. He's not wondering what to make out of our lives. He's saying we have been predestined unto a life of glory and grace. I'm showing you from scripture that every one of us, whether you walk in that reality or not, is not the issue. That in the mind of God, this is his blueprint for every believer. A life of excellence and a life of glory. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul said to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the multifaceted manifold wisdom of God. That means the end of my Christian experience and your Christian experience should be a testament that brings glory to the name of the Lord. The dexterity and excellence that comes from your life. Your life should be a wonder and a marvel to all and sundry. And this has nothing to do with being a preacher. Are we together now? Yes. Is it not in your Bible that the path of the just is as a shining light? That it shines more and more. More and more is the destiny of every believer. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24, Paul was speaking and he made a very profound statement and they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. In fact, the Bible says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, he says, we, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. So settle it once and for all that you have been ordained by reason of your coming into Christ. You have been born into a life of excellence, a life of glory. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. This is very important. You would think that this is so basic and simple, but until you agree with God on this wise, you may never see the glory of God find expression in your life. The Bible calls us living epistles. That means this Bible is not the only Bible that we have. You are literally a living epistle. That when someone closes his Bible, you cause that Bible to still be open through your life. He can continue his Bible study by studying your life. That whatever he did not understand in the room, God will refer him to your life as an explanation to what he was learning. Living epistles. Are we still together? So God has ordained every believer in Christ to a life of excellence and a life of grace. The second thing that I want you to know is that the manifestation of that glory depends on our accessing and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please listen carefully. Haven't established the fact that you and I have been ordained by God to a life of grace, a life of excellence, beauty, and color. Walking in the manifestation of that truth, 
does not just depend on God's desire and his intent. It depends on our number one, accessing, and then number two, engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. That means the possibility exists that in the entire lifetime of a believer, even though in Christ, that you may never truly live out the fullness of your God-given potential. And it will not be an issue of his love or his desire. It will be the absence of your comprehending the ways of God or failing to engage accordingly. He says there remained a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, there is still a Sabbath that they are yet to enter. He says today, if you hear his voice, he says to harden not your heart as they did in the wilderness. Are we together? This is very, very important. That in as much as prophetically speaking, God has ordained a life of grace and excellence and glory, it is your, the, you see, the manifestation of this Zoe life that we have received is knowledge dependent. In ignorance, you cannot manifest the potential of this divine life. Ephesians 4 and verse 18, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. psalm 82 from verse 5 it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes so it takes knowledge to bring you to a point of stature and strength because the bible says galatians 4 for an heir even though he's an heir for as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together very important so paul says in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 he says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace he says which is able to build you up Huh? and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so just believing that i am rising to a level of grace and influence and power that is wonderful but it may rob you if you do not understand that the manifestation of the glory in the life of the believer is predicated upon your accessing and engaging take note two expressions accessing by light and then engaging this conference seeks to create a platform for us to rise and to fly higher in life and it is in your destiny the bible says in daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 it says that they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness even as the stars forevermore so there is no doubt as to the fact that we have been ordained to a life of grace but galatians 2 and verse 2 says i went up by revelation not by desire i went up galatians 2 and 2 i went up by revelation it takes more than desire it takes more than a sincere heart to become a pace setter a trailblazer the difference between any two believers is not the love of god the difference between the bible says the same lord is rich unto all every believer defines his possibilities to the degree to which you labor in the spirit to access and to engage the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus is still teaching and he tells them it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven hallelujah access to light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord you see that glory is related to light when there is no light there cannot be glory is that true yes you are able to see the beauty that is in our world today because it's a combination of your eyes and light you don't just see because you have an eye 
of the light in this room your eye is still healthy you will still not see so is the union of your eyes and light that produces beauty and color are we together now so it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you the next verse says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you his glory will arise verse 3 says gentiles shall come i like this you will not look for them gentiles shall come to thy light and then he says they are kings to the brightness of your rising hallelujah praise the name of the lord yes john the disciple john the baptist the prophet in john chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says there was a man sent from god are we still together it says his name was john verse 7 says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that men through that witness might be saved so settle it once and for all that in as much as god has designed a life of glory and grace a life that reveals the multifaceted possibilities that are in christ it is predicated upon our accessing the truth it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free hallelujah if someone is learning shout aloud amen, amen. It then means that any two believers, please listen, if your life is bankrupt of beauty and color, if your life is bankrupt of glory, if your life is not a perpetual, ever-increasing manifestation of the glory of God, you have to go back and investigate um, whether or not you are a student of the mysteries of the kingdom. And I'll explain that in a moment the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom that when you find the mysteries of the kingdom and you obtain grace to engage them the bible leaves you with an assurance that it is impossible for your life to be without beauty and to be without color even for jesus the son of the living god in as much as he was the word incarnate when he walked upon the earth from age 12 he submitted himself to learning the bible says in luke 2 and verse 52 that even jesus increased in wisdom is that true yes in stature and in favor with god and with men at age 12 he was under the doctor's learning that it is written he used against satan he learned it as a teenager so when satan came he did not say i think i imagine i wonder an opinion he said it is written it is written hallelujah so god desires for our lives to be a revelation of his excellency now please look up there is from a spiritual standpoint there is no destiny that has an advantage by default from a spiritual standpoint there is no destiny that has any advantage by default your advantage begins when you encounter christ that means any life no matter how glorious outside of christ can be frizzled out in a moment the story of job is a lesson for all men that in one day a man's world can crumble completely are we together yes that insurance and assurance that every believer has your your advantage the systems of advantage in your life begins to count at your encounter with jesus christ but now when you come into the kingdom please listen when you come into the kingdom the structure of the kingdom is such that when you now become a believer you submit to the ministry of the holy spirit you submit to the ministry of the word of god are we together and submitting to the word of god begins to expose you to the ways of god 
hidden in the ways of God are the mysteries of the kingdom, the modus operandi of the kingdom. You now begin to learn how things work in the kingdom. You now begin to learn how favor happens, how restoration happens, for instance. Are we together? Yes. Now, two believers differ in their results because one may have been under a teaching priest just like pastor was sharing according to jeremiah 3 15 that i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding happy is the man who finds a teaching priest that mentors you methodically line upon line precept upon precept helping you to understand the ways of god are we together this is what church is supposed to be a convergence of believers who come to learn the ways of god that you should leave every service wiser gaining mastery understanding the things of the spirit because the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you can lay hold of eternal life with intelligence and understanding not doubting your results you can know that you have found the keys listen when it has to do with knowing god and loving god and seeking him our pursuit is infinite even in heaven there is still room to come up here but when it has to do with excelling in the earth the truths that you need to win are finite you can hold them did you get what i just said that the body of knowledge the truths required for the excelling of the believer are not infinite they are finite like a medical student passes through a school knowing that there is a curriculum you can exhaust it does not mean that your learning stops but you can exhaust the curriculum and you are certified as a doctor this is how it is with the work of faith you can exhaust the body of truths that have been allocated the bible calls it marvelous light it is a spiritual curriculum that when you pass through methodically there is a kind of believer you should become hmm. hallelujah you imagine with me a naive but determined young gentleman or lady determined to be a doctor imagine their first day in the university or the medical school you would look at that person and almost laugh to scorn but let that person pass through that system methodically after six years or seven years you come into the hospital and there's the same person seated with confidence ready to inject you ready to counsel you add a few more times and then with diligence and that person has become a consultant while you are crying and lamenting it tells you calm down there's no cause for alarm i know what to do they are not doubting they can write a prescription and never have to call you back to verify if it worked there is a level of mastery they would have gotten so this conference is bringing us to a higher level of mastery listen there is no pilot that flies by mistake no you can move a car learning and playing around just because gravity supported you and the car began to move you may not even know what you are doing until you hit a tree but you the the dynamics of flying an airplane it requires a level of mastery amateurism will not work are we together now yes sir there are times where a car can move on its own because the brake failed or the handbrake failed and if you are fortunate to be sitting in front of it even in ignorance you will flatter yourself for the few minutes left before an accident believing that you are driving that car but can that happen with an aircraft the laws are many it takes intelligence and precision so when you want to fly high in life it is not in the presence of ignorance god is bringing you listen god is bringing you to a place of mastery where you do not fear your results again because you have laid hold on eternal life you can reproduce it again and again it's important for you to understand that god's jealousy and integrity is back of his laws that by these two immutable things it is impossible you are not the first to desire influence you are not the first to desire prosperity you are not the first to desire all of these systems of advantage the bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through faith and patience is that true might find hope 
apostle can god bring a miracle of fruitfulness study abraham that's why his story was left there is it true that god can raise a weak person to become mighty study gideon study joseph study the village girl called hadassah esther so that when god is saying i'm lifting you there is a reference that your faith can latch upon something hallelujah 